So um, as Mason mentioned, um, I'm John Riviello. I work for Comcast uh, along with Mike Ball. Been there for five years. I'm one of the principal engineers for Comcast.net and definitely love SAS and Compass. So what I'm going to talk about now is a um, Compass extension that we worked on back in, I think, May it was. Um, we have lab weeks every quarter. And what that is is basically the engineering team, designers, product, whoever. Um, we have one week devoted to just whatever we want to do. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, and then at the end of the week, we present it to executives. And then in some cases like this, um, we get to open source it. So that's what we end up doing with this. Um, what this project is, is it was taking CSS Lint, which if you're familiar with that, is a tool that um, Nicole Sullivan worked on, which basically allows you to um, run Lint against your CSS. Um, are people familiar with Lint tools like JS Lint and that kind of stuff? Is that resonate with people? Cool. Um, so to do that, uh, this basically this demo is going to be a lot of command line stuff, so if that scares you, um, I'm going to do a live demo, so that will show you it can't be that scary to actually work in the terminal. Um, but basically, Compass already has some commands built into it, which you've already seen throughout the course of this night, um, a few of them. So basically, if you run Compass help, you'll get a list of different commands you can run. Um, you've seen Mason show compile, watch, um, create, stuff like that. Um, there's also some more interesting commands, such as, um, as you saw, I just ran help. That gave me a list of commands. There's frameworks that are built into Compass. So if you just run Compass Frameworks, it'll list the frameworks available to you. So when you're creating a project, you know what um, frameworks you could include in it. There's Blueprint. Um, Blueprint used to be in now. It's believe you need to add it into it. Um, we got a few there. And I'll mention mm -hmm. if you install something like Zeralkit, that's listed in the frameworks command. Mm -hmm. So if you've got other frameworks that you can install, it'll pull it in automatically. Yeah. Um, Another one that's there is the Compass Validate, um, which basically if you have an existing project, it'll compile your CSS and run the W3C validator against that. Um, so this is kind of the idea that I borrowed when I went ahead and went to create um, integrate CSS Lint into Compass. It basically does the same thing. So this is the case where it's running an external uh, tool that runs the validator against your CSS. Um, so we went ahead and wanted to do the same thing with CSS Lint. Um, so to do that, um, I guess first off I'll mention if you've got your computer open, um, the GitHub address is comcast.github.com slash compass dash CSS Lint. Um, we open source it through Comcast, which is pretty cool. I thought that they were allowed us to work on this and open source it. And that's cool. Can you put the link to that in the notes when you get back to your desk? Like yeah, no problem. Cool. So as far as actually uh, using this, so I've got a, just a basic directory set up. Um, so what you would do is you would first start off by, um, you, would, you need to clone actually an updated version of Compass. Um, I did this work and then it wouldn't actually compile, I'm sorry, it wouldn't recognize the command that I created. Um, so I was talking with Chris Epstein over email, who's awesome by the way, he gets back to you within like a day if you need help with Compass. And found out that as far as he's aware, no one's tried to actually do this besides himself and he just imported all the commands into Compass, the actual library. Um, so he supports this idea, but apparently the code he thought would do it doesn't do it. Um, so I filed a bug with him for that. It hasn't been fixed yet, but basically to actually um, fix it, it's just one line. So I have this available um, on GitHub. It's just a fork of Compass with this one change, which is requiring Compass CSS Lint. It's pretty simple. So as far as getting that up and running, if you're going to use this on your own machine, um, you'd go ahead, you would clone that on GitHub. Do people know how GitHub works, basically? Does that make sense? Yes or no? Or see mostly nodding heads. Um, so you'd clone that, so I believe I've already got that here. Yeah, so I've, I've cloned down the Compass one. So and then I'm um, just going to go ahead and jam Oops. So to create a local gem, you just run gem build and the name of the gem spec file. Compass has a gem spec built into it because it is a gem. That's when you do gem install, whatever, that's part of the process. Basically, build a gem, push it up to something like Ruby gems, and then when you do gem install, it installs it locally. Um, in this case, we've downloaded the Ruby code. We've run gem build against that to create our own local gem. 
and then to install that, we're just going to do gem install um, the name of the gem that I created. And that'll go ahead and install um, this custom version of Compass. See it do it. Um, you'll also notice I didn't do sudo gem install. Um, the reason that is I'm using RVM, which is Ruby version manager, um, which is awesome. It's definitely, if you're going to be working with different versions of Ruby, or if you're going to be developing a compass extension, or any extension really, or any Ruby gem, um, highly recommend it. Basically, it's a tool that will allow you to um, install any version of Ruby that you could possibly want. Um, so if I type RVM list, you'll see I have three versions of Ruby installed in this case. Um, I've set Ruby 193 to be my default. Um, so everything I do will be compiled against Ruby 193. And if I were to run rbm gem set list. Um, so gem sets are a contained set of gems. So when you're doing pseudo gem install, you're actually installing gems to your hard drive there as like the system wide ones. This allows you to create a contained environment for just your gems. So in this case, um, prior to come up here, I set up a demo gem set. Um, and then I just do rbm use, rbm gem set use demo. That's how it tells me to set. It's using the demo one. Um, if I wanted to switch to, say, test, using test. Um, and if you do gem list, which is a command that will list your local gems, you'll see that um, they're different. So I just did that. If I switch back to demo, and then gem list. You'll see I have a small set of gems. I basically have the very basic set of gems that come um, along with my newly installed version of Compass, which is just that one tweak to the current stable release of Compass. Um, then I've also, I have a, let's see, a sample project here, which is also on GitHub, by the way. Um, it's all under the Comcast GitHub account. So this is very basic. Um, has a gem file, it has a SAS directory, and all that has is a couple of SAS files in it. Um, so if you were to clone this sample um, and just do bundle install, really quick. Bundle, bundle is a command, another Ruby thing that basically allows you to manage your gems. You can package up all your dependencies and pull it into one um, file. So you just need to run bundle install, and this will install all the gems you need to run the project. Um, so in this case, it's going to pull down um, the CSS lint that I created. Um, I can show what that bundle file looks like. So you can see all it's doing is requiring um, CSS lint. And once it pulls it down, Um, and also, since I've declared Compass as a as a dependency, it's going to install Compass for me. It's going to install CSS Lint, which is a separate Ruby gem that we created, uh, Mike and I, to be able to run this through Ruby. Um, and it spits out this message going, "Hey, you know, thanks, but um, there's a bug. So you need to install your own version of Compass." Um, also, because I use Bundle to install, it did install the actual latest version of Compass, so I need to go ahead and uninstall that. Again, RVM makes that real easy. Um, so if I do gem list, you'll see that I have compass the normal version and compass the custom version. Um, so I'll just do gem uninstall compass. And I'll uninstall the main one. So now I'm back to my custom version of compass and the project's all set up. Um, so now if I were to run compass help, um, you'll see there's now a CSS link command that's been added. Um, and to get that working, once the bug is fixed, all you really need to do is create a project and then in your uh, config.rb file is just require. Um, there's no need to install it. The, in, the compass install command is for a CSS framework. This is a command. So according to Chris, his goal is that you just require gem name here, and that would just require it. Um, and the one change I had to make to Compass again was just to add that into Compass somewhere else so that it would recognize it. So now we've got a project. We've got Compass installed. We have Compass CSS Lint installed. So we can go ahead and run 
compass CSS lint. And you'll see it's compiling my CSS, um, generate the two CSS files. And the way I've set up my sample files is basically one has all the possible CSS lint errors in it. The other one is all of them fixed. So with the, there's a lot of them here, as you can see. So first one, clean, has no errors. And there's 36 errors in sample.css. Um, so you can just be able to run this from the command line. You can integrate it with the build system as well. Um, that's something we're looking to do at work probably in the next few weeks so that we can have it. You can potentially break the build if you use bad CSS. Um, and there's a few more options that you have available to you, all from the command line, which um, hopefully isn't too scary for you, like I said. Um, so if I do CSS lint dash help, this will list out the various commands you can pass to it. Um, these are all taken from the default CSS lint project. So it, the list rules will list the different rules that are available um, that you want to check against. There's a quiet mode, which will, is, again, says only output the ones that have errors. So if I were to run just quiet, for example, it won't tell me that clean doesn't have any errors because it's only going to spit out the errors that are part of um, the files that actually have errors. And that's a lot that kind of comes up on the screen. So there's a few more options here you might want to play around with. Um, can you configure what it sends it to? You can. And that's definitely something that um, I leverage. Um, so there's errors, warnings, and ignore. So for example, if you only, by default, everything is a warning, because none of these are crucial errors. Um, but you could define specific errors and specific warnings so that within your organization, you could define, OK, these errors I definitely want to fix. So I'll let my fingers do the talking then. But, uh. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw a format equals compact on there too. Um, but say all I care about is errors and um, you feel that IDs are horrible, you should never use them. This is like a smacks idea, if you're familiar with um, Jonathan Snook's book, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, so here, you can see it's just said, hey, there's just one error now. So I defined all I care about is errors that are the idea error. Um, you can also, again, define some things as warnings. So I've got, uh, say, warnings. Uh, maybe we don't want to have people using important, perhaps. Um, so we'll just do that. And it says, hey, don't use IDs. That's a, an error and warning um, used important there. Um, additionally, this is in a recent version of um, CSS Lint, you can have a config file to have all these commands kind of stored so that you need to keep adding to the command line. Um, we were going to add that during lab week and they didn't get a time to, and luckily they went ahead and added it to the base project anyway. Um, so all I have to do is add a CSS Lint RC file. And you can paste the same command line arguments you would here into that. So. This would probably make working much more easier because I can say I have that there. Um, you can list out a bunch of different warnings, and I'll just grab a few more. So we'll say universal selector, make that a warning, and regex, make that an error, save the file. Um, so now if I just run compass CSS lint without those parameters, it's going to read the RC file, pick up those parameters, and output it right there. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, Again, it's based on CSS Lint. If people are curious about the code, it's on GitHub. I could step through it, but it's um, gets pretty geeky Ruby code. If people are interested, I'm happy to talk about it. But um, uh, what's the barrier to getting the? What is the Compass bug actually? What's the barrier to getting that work through? So the the bug is basically when you add, you should just be able to add require. Let me bring up the codes here. Talk about that. So in the actual source code here. Um, if you were going to create a compass command extension, 
the magic to make that a command is this register. Um, so for whatever reason, when you do that, parts of Compass realize it, but other parts don't. And the part that actually processes the commands doesn't. Um, I was playing around with Compass and just kind of like outputting statements to try to debug it. And um, talked to Chris about it. And he was just like, hmm, yeah, I'm not quite sure why it's not working. So he said, file the bug. Um, I barely know enough Ruby to be dangerous, so I'm trying to figure it out, but haven't yet. Um, Mike knows more than I do, but he's probably would say that he's dangerous and you know better. But <laughs> um, but yeah, we're trying to figure it out. I haven't figured it out yet, but so that's why they have this one little workaround. Um, so if you're running, say for example, the latest version of Compass and you want to use this, all you would need to do again is just change that one piece of code. So actually, that's a link to the bug. So it works in your modified version of Compass because you've hard coded in the CSS commands and then you can register. Yeah, if you look. But, the, but the, what Chris Rickers wants to take is you can be able to register any kind of new command. Yeah, any command at all you want. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the here's the magic file. It's basically this is all the commands when you run Compass help that are listed there. Um, so just adding the require, whatever your new command is, in this case, compass CSS lin, um, that makes it work. Um, as for why it's a bug, you know, hopefully we'll figure it out soon. But for now, you need that workaround. Um, and that's that. I have a question? Um, so if also have your stats line comments turned on so you can find out where you need to go into your stats sheet to yes. get that stuff up? Yeah, so if I opened up um, my style sheets here, for example. So you can, if you would, it, it's linting against the generate CSS again. Right. So if you saw that it was on, like, there's an example here. Um, so line 114. We know that, okay, this is the CSS, so I know that on line 67 of sample.sass, that's where I need to go ahead and fix that. So that's literally, there's like a way to cut off that step at some point where it would show you in your CSS sheet that it's not having to check. That's a great idea, actually. I don't know how you would put that Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's that's an awesome idea. I can definitely, um, if I got some time, give it a shot. It is open source now, so anybody can as well, but. That sounds like a fun challenge. Did I miss anything, Mike, that you think? Cool. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, no problem.